Well, hello. Today, in this quite unassuming brown box, we have a new product from Full Speed RC. But just before we get into it, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell icon in the corner, which will tell you when I'm uploading new videos. Anyway, in this, something a little bit different because I've been doing, it seems, uh, 2S and 3S whoops solidly for months and months. That seems to be the big craze at the moment. And a few people have quite rightly said, like, if you're going to fly these outside, why are you flying a whoop? The sort of, you know, having those uh, ducks doesn't doesn't make for a great flying outside, and there are compromises to be made. So, what about if you had a lot of the technology from whoops in terms of the, the motor size and bits like that and the lightness, and you put it in a pure outside flying quad? You'd, you'd have something like this. This is called the Full Speed RC Toothpick. And I sort of wondered about that name for a while until I actually got it out of the box and then I tend to realise why it's called that. So what you have in this uh, quite plain packaging, underneath the little protective layer, um, is this. This is the toothpick. And yeah, I said I was wondering about the name, but once you feel it and just feel how thin uh, this thing feels and how lightweight it is, it is, uh, I think the name's very worthy. Um, I mean, to be quite honest, when I when I sort of felt it, I was like, oh, handle it with kid gloves, because I was actually worried that this this feels so uh, light. Is it gonna, is it going to be fragile? Um, I mean, it's it's carbon fibre. It is, it is I think one mil carbon fibre, but it has these sort of struts at the front and back to give a little bit more rigidity to the frame. That says you can still flex it pretty easy, but it is so light without the battery. Uh, Forty one and a half grams which is crazy light. So everything on here feels like it could have been lifted straight off of um, a, a, a whoop style drone and put on this with the stretched frame. So we've got 1103 8000 kV motors, slightly larger props than you see in a whoop and obviously two bladed. These are 65 mil blades, that's just over two and a half inches I think. We've got um, a Canix uh, F2 camera, uh, a little bit of a difference, normally you see the EOS 2s coming in, this is a uh, different again. This is a full speed F4 flight controller and um, VTX and they've got their own free, uh, free sky compatible uh, receiver in there with the little receiver antenna pushed out there which is quite a nice place for it. Uh, obviously got a whip antenna for the VTX there. The suggestion on this one is to run 2S or 3S 300 to 450 milliamp hours. I checked with full speed because I wanted to find out if it was okay to use a 3S high voltage battery and they said yeah, it's what we use, that should be fine. And it feels like it should be crazy fast. Um, it hasn't got any of the, the ducts to get in the way. It's kind of a stretched X shape. Uh, it should be interesting. And we've got you know enough space to angle the camera up to 45 degrees, which is like crazy angle. Now the VTX it uses the tramp protocol and is switchable from 25 to 600 milliwatts. But out of the factory, it comes locked at 25 and some of the channels are missing and you have to do the unlock procedure on that one uh, which I'll show you how to do once I remind myself how to do this. Oh, I should say elsewhere in the box the only thing you'll get is a couple of battery straps. So we're looking here at these little loops to put the battery through. No silicon mat or anything to go on and the way we have to thread these through means the battery is going to be totally wrapped up in there so uh, a little bit worried about how they're going to grip on but hopefully we should, we'll, we'll find out. So yeah, I don't really know what to expect from this. It's it's kind of a quite a different prospect, but I'm looking forward to flying it. It's I'm hoping it's going to be super quick and, and super acrobatic and things. Uh, but we'll see. I'd better get it up on uh, Betaflight first, get this receiver bound, which is in there somewhere. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, well, let's connect in and go through Betaflight very quickly. Now, I've already gone through this and set it up because I didn't want to spend too long in Betaflight because... Um, I, I, I think I tend to spend a little bit too much in it, but I was just going to run you through what was there and what I actually changed. So ports wise, it's uh, all set up. You've got Serial RX as UART 1, you've got IRC Tramp as UART 2. Configuration, I added the motor stop, it's running D-Shot 600, it has an 8K 8K loop, it's nice and fast. Obviously I've changed the craft name, um, and OSD, anti-gravity and dynamic filter is set by default, which is good. The maximum cell voltage is set to 4.5. This is handy, uh, and it was already like this if you're running uh, high voltage batteries, which will go up to 4.35, so it won't get the cell thing wrong. The pit tuning, there's, is there stuff done? 
I can't tell anymore on the, on this one. But uh, what there was here was a, a bit of a strange RC rate setup. But I've just messed around with the Super 8 just to take my max velocity up to a thousand degrees. It was at about 800. Receiver, we got that all connected. I was a little bit worried I wouldn't be able to get to the bind button, but it actually pulls out and it's quite easy to connect. So we've done our sub trims. I say that pitch is misbehaving and so is your. You will see that OX5 has already been set for RSSI. That's good. It's also a telemetry receiver. So we'll start telling you if telemetry is lost or low or whatever. Modes, there was just arm and total modes added. So I've put my normal arm angle beeper air mode flip over crash good news as well that the d shot beeper was set up because there's no physical ones here but i didn't have to do anything else there um and osd was fairly sensible i had a couple of bits down the bottom i've just put my normal stuff on now full speed wanted me to mention a couple of things uh and the first one is about the version of firmware this is running this is running fs f408 which i guess is full speed an F4 I guess. Now one issue you may face if you want to flash that is currently the the firmware is not there. I mean hopefully it's going to be fixed in the future. Now you have an alternative which is you can run the Matek F411 firmware but if you do that there's one extra thing to do in the configuration you need to go into the your degrees and change that to 270 like that but only if you go ahead and use that firmware um, I don't quite know why the firmware is not included in github hopefully that's something that's going to come up the other thing they asked me to mention was not about beta flight but about the receiver itself they use and the receiver I'm glad to say is quite accessible you can get it in here that's the bind button now the the, the, the question is about how it works in inverted or non-inverted S bus. By default this is non-inverted and many boards will expect to be inverted. You can uh, change your UART to non-inverted if you're on an F3 or an F7 board. If you're on an F4 you can't and that's when you might need to change it on here which I'm just going to show you. Obviously this has been set up and works fine out the box but should you be getting one of these and plug it into something else this, this is what happens. Now I couldn't get it quite to work as expected. The uh, website suggested um, if we gave a short press of the button it would flash to tell us what mode it's in. And if you press it, it will, if we, if we press it, it will, it will go blue, but not really. So it's more about changing it. So if you press the button and hold it in, which is awkward to do in the camera, so the red flashes there indicate it's going to change to inverted and if we then repower it it's going to come up as inverted and if we press it then after repairing it we can change it back to non-inverted if I can remember where the button is there somewhere so three blue flashes mean it's going to go back to non-inverted and we just have to repower that again. So that is only something to look at should you be installing this separately or for some reason you're not getting any stick movement when you're looking at beta flight. You can try changing that setting because you always change it back and plug it in and see if it, it works. For the last bit of setup, unlocking the VTX, the instructions are actually correct now on the website. They used to be wrong. So I'm glad they're looking good now. First off, the button of the VTX is just in there. So what you need to do is press it down and then do a count. It, the website says 20 seconds, but if you count to about 25. And now when you release the button, you should see a sequence of red, green and blue lights. But ignore the green light that's already there. So let's see if we can see that. There's blue, there's red, there's green. It's all out of focus, but we've got the sequence. After that point, unplug the power plug it back in and you'll have unlocked the VTX so you can go higher power and you can do some of the channels that were locked out previously. Hello and welcome back to the well sort of strip of thin piece of grass I'm having to make do and call a field right now that's all I've got. We're here to test the full speed toothpick and we've got a 300 milliamp uh, freest high voltage battery on there. Uh, feels okay I don't, I don't particularly like this battery strap but it, it seems to hold in okay um 
and just want to basically drag race it up and down the strip for size, see how it feels. Um, but for that, I'm going to do a little bit of a line of sight hover because I just don't know if this is going to be super powerful and how much throttle it needs or whatever. I'm interested to find out. So I'm going to uh, just give it a quick hover, maybe give it a quick uh, thrust and uh, see what it does. Whoop. <laughs> it's jumping off like a crazy thing. It doesn't like taking off in self-level mode. Well, it's very responsive, but it's only sort of 50% throttle, so that's not so bad. A quick punch, but there's not much room here, it's a bit of a worry. Woo! <laughs> It seems to have plenty of power. Let's let's get the goggles on, shall we? Yeah, this uh, quad really doesn't like to take off in self-level mode. I often start off an angle when I'm doing line of sight, and it just kept going a bit squiffy. It was fine once in the air, but yeah, uh, I mean that's probably the last line of sight flight I do anyway, so no no particular problem. Um, and here I am, and off with the maiden and it's feeling pretty good it feels really quick I, it's so tiny and light and it, you you get it going and it's zooming along and if you look at the throttle percentage on the bottom left there you can see i'm not even at 50 percent most of the time now i'm doing some passes here to try and capture a few on the gopro and i'll show you what this looks like but blink and you'll miss it because we're looking at a tiny thin thing um <laughs> trying to pick it out amongst the background. And then this happened. Now that came down with quite a fud. I was expecting to find bits of broken tiny cord everywhere, but it was just sat there on the ground. The only thing that happened is the battery, which as I said before, I don't particularly like the strap. It, it, it doesn't feel as tight as the normal one. Um, that ejected out the the front, so I had no signal, and, and it was, you know, not that easy to find. And even harder to find a battery, which was like nine feet away in the long grass, and it's just me feeling around my hands and knees until I managed to find it. Because those little free cell um, 300 milliamp high voltage ones aren't cheap, especially when compared to larger batteries. But yeah, this, this battery was all about just really going up and down and, and trying to get some fly pass. So let's move over to battery number two now, because what I want to do with that is a little bit of um, just trying some acro out as something a little bit different. Okay, off with battery number two, and I'm just trying to use these trees and stuff to spin around and things. Now, there was one problem I was having with this quad, because I, I was having an absolute blast. I'm flying around, there's a big smile on my face, because this is really responsive it just rips up in the air when you want it to and you've got so much more power available to, to get yourself out of trouble and of course it's so light it just floats around however this receiver um is is not great in terms of the signal i was getting i thought i was going to wear the speaker out my tyrannus it was like telemetry low telemetry critical all the way around and if you look at the rssi information on the screen there you can see it's you know, if you're getting 50, you're you're doing well, and this thing goes all the way down to sort of below 20. So I was really worried about it falling out of the sky. Now, it didn't, but it didn't really give me any confidence in in how far I could go because as soon as you start hearing, you know, telemetry critical, your obvious thing is is to come back again. Um, now I'm just doing some power loops there, and it, uh, although I don't like this little strip of grass it's really great if you want to learn to do power loops when you can see both sides of the trees you can you can get your timing absolutely down pat but um, anyway yeah as as a little acro quad and, and flying around it, it really does do it well I mean it's tiny and you would expect it to have absolute no inertia but it really does belt around the sky really quickly and you can have a, an awful lot of fun just messing around i mean this is this is not something that's going to be hd or particularly nice to look at your footage back but when you're out flying it and just uh messing around it is a lot of fun and you, you can do a lot of scope 
even close in and you have to be close in because this receiver is not really up to the job that I want it to be I have to be honest now I'm always having a little bit of an issue in the turns these I haven't flown two bladed props for a while and the difference I think of it is sort of akin to a three bladed prop is like a sort of when a car with with sort of great traction goes around a corner it really sticks to it and the two bladed prop is a bit like having a drift car around that corner so when I'm in the turns it, I'm I'm flying like I, I, I used to fly my regular quads with free blade and I'm sort of going a bit wide and, and crazy on it but it's you know it's all rescuable this thing's got so much power you just get out of anything you like really easily but uh, yeah acro wise I was having fun I just wish I had more range but let's flip over now to uh, the last battery I did net because I wanted to try and get a, a bit more speed around like I was doing a race. So here we are on battery number three and I've got the camera angle just about as high as it would go, something 40-ish degrees and I want to sort of use these little trees as my race course. It's, it's a very basic circuit, I'm just sort of going around uh, and seeing how I can do to, to get around it and it's really hard to get that much throttle into it because where it is light uh, and you, you sort of got the you can't put it forward anymore it just wants to go upwards and I'm just trying some things like you know uh, tighter turns around other things this is not a prescribed circuit it's just me sort of messing around but trying to trying to do a bit more of a speed run I am no racer by any uh, word at all but it seems like again this this isn't gonna you know go up against five inches but if you're got a couple of mates together and you've just got a small area and a few trees to race around you're going to have an absolute blast because this thing is rapid um, and it will just do what you want it to I'm enjoying it I must say the the camera this is the f2 uh, from Cadix it, it, it's it's not perfect there's a bit of noise in the DVR recording it was better in the goggles but I think I like it better than the EIS 2 it's it looks slightly different uh, people complain about the redness in the colour. I can still see a little bit of that, but overall, it, it you know it's quite functional. And this this is what this is. This is a quad just for ripping around in and, and doing your own thing. You're not really looking at recording footage and putting it on YouTube particularly. It's not ever going to have HD in it. So all you want is a, a fairly clear view that you can uh, know where you're going and and be happy that you've got a decent view. And it's picking out these trees pretty well. Um, I'm getting a, a reasonable sense of depth from things, although I should say the lighting here is quite good today. Uh, quite how well it's going to be on a dim day or going through sort of trees and undergrowth and stuff like that, it might be a bit trickier. But yeah, good fun was had. Uh, and flight times, um, even really thrashing this, I got over three minutes and you can go easy and, and get a lot more, but you won't want to go easy, you'll just want to rip it around and around and around. Anyway, let's bring this down and uh, we'll talk about what I thought overall. Well, that was super fun. Anything where I'm flying around with a big smile on my face makes me happy. And this is a happy little quad. You can fly it around, you can absolutely just go crazy with it and it, it, it just copes. I was surprised um, when I crashed it on that first battery, I was like, oh, I'm going to break it. but the lightness uh, it keeps it alive so just a, a couple of niggles one is the battery strap I don't like these ones where you have to sort of just fold it over and get it tight I, I want to pull against something to get it tighter so the battery never feels really super secure that said it, it never moved unless I crashed it um, and I was pleasantly surprised to crash it and not have anything go wrong so that was kind of nice that the battery ejected in that point of view but yeah the big bugbear for me was the receiver this little I mean, it seems to have the antenna in a decent position. Um, it should be getting a reasonable signal, but it just wasn't It wasn't getting enough range for me. Now, part of the problem is if you're going fast down a really straight line, you're gonna go from full signal to no signal really quickly, because this is really quick. So I'm not sort of thinking, you know, I want to be able to explore and stuff, but having something like, you know, about 300 meters of range would work. And I'm sort of considering, you know, do I take this out and put an XM Plus in there? Because something like an XM Plus, would get you plenty of range and, and enough to really be able to thrash around in that area without worrying that you know your signal's going dodgy in one area because you don't want to be 
falling down because this is so tiny and light it's not gonna it's not gonna fall through a tree it's just gonna sit there um, and it's quite hard to find if the battery does eject take it from one who knows I spent 10 minutes finding that and it was only just in front of me um, so yeah that that's the major thing and you know fitting a better receiver is, is not too bad on upgrades it's like 10 15 dollars to get a better receiver but it's not that cheap a quad it's currently sold for like 126 dollars which is not outrageously expensive but it's certainly not cheap either but in terms of fun and getting the smiles on your face i've been really impressed with this i love the way it handles i love the speed it gives you um i just really like it apart from that receiver that's the downside anyway this was kindly supplied for review by full speed so thanks to them and i'll have links down below where you can find it uh, until next time, I hope that's been helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.